Let's now introduce the random walk model. The random walk model states that the location at the time t is the sum of the previous location and some random noise. In this case, we assume that the noise is normally distributed, so it has a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. Mathematically, we express the random walk model like this. Of course, if we start the random walk at 0, then any point in time is the sum of the noise expressed like this. Here is an example of a random walk process that we will generate later with Python. There is not much we can say about this time series since we know that it is purely random process. Looking at the ACF plot for this time series, we see that the autocorrelation is very high at first and slowly decreases. This is indicative of a trend. Now, is there a way to remove that trend? Of course, since we know that random walk adds noise to the previous point, if we take the difference between a point and a previous one, then we get only noise. If it seems unclear now, don't worry, we will go through each step in Python in the next lesson. So by taking the difference and plotting the result, we get the following. Noise, we see that there is no clear trend in the time series and we get only purely noise. If we plot the ACF function, you get the following. Now you recognize this as the ACF of white noise, where only the lag at zero is significant. Awesome. So let's apply what we learned in Python and cover each step together. All right, so let's see how we can simulate the random walk model in Python. This is also a great occasion for us to see in action the autocorrelation function, white noise, and stationarity, all subjects that we addressed in earlier videos. So as always, we'll start off by importing the libraries that we will need for this lesson. So from stats uh, models dot graphics dot TSA plots, I will import plot ACF. So plot the autocorrelation function. Uh, from stats models models dot TSA dot stat tools, I will import the ACF. And then I will import matplot libplot as plt and we will also need numpy as np. Uh, now I am going to filter the any warnings that we will get. So I will import warnings and I will say that warnings dot filter warnings and I will set this to ignore. And finally we put the Jupyter magic of matplotlib in line. Awesome. Once this will get important, as in the previous video, I will also uh, set the uh, figure size for the notebook. So plt.rc params figure.fixSize and this will be equal to 10 by 7.5. Perfect. So now we are ready to start with the uh, simulation of the random walk model. So talk about a simulation of random uh, walk. So to do that, we will assume uh, that the random walk model starts at zero. Therefore, like I mentioned in the previous lesson, uh, this will mean that uh, it will be the sum of all random errors. So I will say that the number of steps will be equal to np random dot standard normal and we'll generate a thousand data points. That's what it, this line is for. And I will set that the very first step, so step at zero, at time zero, will be equal to zero. And so our random walk, so the random walk will then be equal to the cumulative sum of all the steps. Once you run Sorry, I made a mistake. I wrote step instead of steps. So once you run this code cell, you should have a thousand uh, generated data points that will all be uh, random errors based on the previous step, right? Uh, because we are taking the cumulative sum. So we can take a look at the generated data. Uh, let's take a look in this case at the first uh, 10 points. 
And as you can see, in my case, I get zero and then one, one, two, 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 four, five, six. Of course, this is a random function. Uh, in your case, you might get something that is completely different. But don't worry, uh, the end results will be the same. So let's quickly plot our generated random walk model. So plt.plot of random walk. Uh, let's give it a title. So plt.title will be the simulated random walk. And let's show the plot. And you will get, of course, this is the plot that I get. So for my random function, uh, you will, uh, of course, get something else. Because like I said, it is random. Perfect. So now let's take a look at the ACF function. So we can actually extract the coefficients of the autocorrelation function. So let's say that random walk ACF coefficients is equal to the ACF of random walk. And now you can uh, display those uh, coefficients if you would like, and you get the following. Now, like I said, it doesn't matter what your random walk looks like. You should get uh, ACF coefficients that are very similar to this. So, of course, at times zero, uh, at lag zero, sorry, the coefficient is one. And then you should see that it is uh, progressively going down slowly. So at 0 0.99, 0 0.98, etc. Now, let's see if we can plot the um, ACF function. So to do that, we will simply type plot. ACF and we'll say random walk and I will set the maximum number of likes to 20 and you get the following plot. Now, as you can see, we get our uh, coefficient at lag zero of one and then it is slowly going down. So clearly we have autocorrelation here, right? All those peaks are significant. They are outside of the light blue area and uh, clearly this time series here, this simulated random walk is not a stationary time series. So what way can we think of to make it stationary? Well, if you think about it, because we are taking the cumulative sum at each step, so each error is adding up the error from the previous term at the previous lag, right? Well, if we take the difference, so if we subtract each time step from the previous one, what we should get is only a random error. So let's do that right away. So I will say that the random walk that is difference will be equal to np.diff. We pass in our random walk and I set n equal to one. So that means take the difference from the previous time step for every data point that we have. Once this cell is run, we should now get a stationary difference time series. So let's take a look at it. So I will say that plt dot plot of random walk diff. And now let's give it a title. So the title in this case should just be noise, right? Because we are only getting now the random errors at each step. So this should look like white noise to us. And now let's take a look at the plot. So plt dot show. And you should get something very similar to this. Now, as you can see, we don't have any trend anymore. It just seems to be a uh, randomly generated noise, which is exactly what you should get in this case. And now let's take a look at the ACF plot for um, random noise. So we can say plot the ACF of the random walk that was differenced. And again, I will set the maximum number of lags to 20. Forgot my semicolon here and you get the following. Now, as you can see, it doesn't matter what the random walk uh, model generated in your case. Once you differenced it, you should get the following ACF plot. So you only get the significant peak at like zero and then everything afterwards stays within the um, area of confidence. So you know that this is not significant anymore. And so clearly now you can see how the ACF looks for a non-stationary data uh, time series and for a stationary time series. So thank you very much for taking this free preview with me. As always, there is a link in the description below if you want to take the full course. 
the link will have a promo code applied to it already. So you can click on the link and you will get the course with 87% off. And if by any chance you click on the link and the promo code has expired, feel free to send me an email. It will also be in the description and I will send you a coupon code so that you get the course on sale. So thank you very much and I'll see you on the next one.